Yeah. And I feel like that's, I mean, I think a lot of people read books um, for the story and, and obviously that's important, but I write from a much deeper place and it moves me when people feel that depth and connect to it and it it resonates on some level because that's really, I don't know, that to me is the whole point of art to connect yeah. us. And that was a, a big point in the book too of of how art connects us and makes us feel less alone. Very much so. Um, so tell me a bit about your background as a writer, if, if I'm, I could be wrong, maybe you've written half a dozen books or so. And, um, if you always, has this always been your passion? Does this feel like your main, uh, passion work in life? Cause you're very good at it. It's not like you just like, Oh, I'm writing books on the side. It seems like, you know what you're doing. <laughs> like, well, I started as a writer in my professional life. And I, as uh, growing up, like I had two passions. I was a really, really weird kid. I never left my room if I didn't have to. And I was either reading or listening to music. So um, it kind of makes sense that I ended up as a writer and in the music business. But um, I started as a screenwriter, actually, when I graduated from college. And I spent a few years working in Hollywood and just hated it. Um, it was not the, it was not the world for me. Um, so I started writing novels just kind of as an exercise. I was, I was being hired to write screenplays, but just hating it and, and started writing an, what ended up being my first novel after Jeff Buckley died. Um, cause I was a huge Jeff Buckley fan and I was really heartbroken after he died. And, um, and so my first novel, I basically sat down and listened to Grace for nine months and made up a story. Um, And so that's kind of the way I work. Honestly, it's like some sort of musical piece usually gets inside of me and it, it connects with something in my life that I have a question about and it turns into um, a book. And I, I've written three novels that have been published and um, one graphic novel that I wrote the text to, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm super pro- prolific because I also have this thing where there's so much I love to do in life. And when I'm writing, yeah. I'm not doing anything but writing. It's I think about it all day. I s- dream about the characters at night and, you know, eight hours can go by. And at the end of the day, Scott's like, okay, you need to eat. You need to turn off your computer. Like it's that kind of thing. So I take yeah. big breaks between books because – I want to have a life and um, I'm going to start one probably this summer and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Do you have a feeling of like what it will be about or how does that process work of discovering the subject matter? Is it through music? It often is through music, although this one feels like like everything that I went through last year and kind of learning about um, more about myself and um, my wounds and why I do some of the things I do or have done. Um, and also this deep dive that I'm doing into, um, women's studies and sexuality and gender and sort of somehow I'm going to bring all that together and, and write a book about it. I'm not even sure what that means yet. Mm, Wow. (laughs) Wow. Well, I get, this is a random question. Um, and this is a bit of a synchronicity too, I'll tell you. Do you know someone named Cal Callahan? I do not. Do you? Because I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? And I was like, it's got to be the same guy. Whoa, so no. check this out. This is what? crazy then. This is, cra- this is crazy. Check this out. I thought I made that up. <laughs> well, I, I've been talked to, I've asked Rod about this a lot. I was like, do you think it's the same? She's like, no. And I'm like, come on, who has, that's a, a unique name. And like, this guy's kind of a, anyway. Cal is a fan and um, from a while back and he came in my, and he was just a big supporter and he would like come to things and want to support and think about doing events and would send me stuff. Like there's a sweatshirt from his podcast called the unlearned podcast. And I wear it a lot cause I just like it. And he sent me um, music one day and I opened the box and guess what it was? What it was, it was the vinyl box set of Jeff Buckley at what? Uh, Sinead. Yeah, he's a huge Jeff Buckley fan. What? Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's his name's Cal Callahan. 
That and he is, is he's also you're blowing my mind right now. No, he's very tall and he's like I think you know, what do I know? He's a good looking guy and he's he's like a big energy. You wow. know, he's like a bold, bold guy. I haven't actually talked to him in, in a little while, but I'm when I read that, I was like, maybe you guys know each other, you know, because he's actually like a West Coast kind of and he's in circles we're in. And I, I feel like, like I need to know him. Well, I'll introduce you. Just be like, hey, as a book character, you guys I gotta should, send him a copy read. of the book, if nothing else. Hell yeah. I'll, I will <laughs> definitely introduce you. But I mean, that blows my mind too. And he's and he's a big Jeff of all the vinyl. He only really sent me one. It was Jeff Buckley. See, the reason why that makes me even like feel more magic is because my, like the magic that started happening in my life really started happening when I discovered Jeff's music. And so like I could tell you the craziest stories about what happened in my life synchronistically after I discovered Jeff's music. And um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's there's such long stories, but like for instance, I didn't know Jeff's music before he died. So it's 1999 and Chris Cornell puts out a, his first solo album and there's a song on it that it, I find really inspiring and I start writing a story that this song inspires and that night I have this dream and in the dream I'm sitting at a kitchen table with Chris and with this guy that he tells me is Jeff Buckley and they can't talk to each other because Jeff's dead and Chris is alive, but somehow I can hear them both. And so Chris is saying to me in the dream, can you tell Jeff, blah, 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 blah. And I'd look at Jeff and say, Chris says, blah, blah, blah. And Jeff would tell me something and say, can you tell? And so it wow. was just the most craziest dream. So the next morning I bought the Grace CD because I was like, I need to, I don't know what this Jeff Buckley person is all about, but I need to listen to his record. And Scott and I were flying to Italy that day to find a place to get married. So we're on the plane to Milan or somewhere. And I put in the headphones and literally three notes into the record, mm. like all the hair standing up and I'm listening to it. And I'm just like crying, like Scott's asleep and I'm bawling on the plane. And he wakes up and I'm at Lover, You Should Have Come Over at this point, which is my Great. second One of the greatest favorite ever song. Made ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm just bawling and he's like, what's the matter? What's the matter? And I'm, I just give him the headphones and I'm like, you have to listen to this song. Um, and from that moment on, all kinds of magical things started happening in my life. And here we are. And so thanks, Jeff. <laughs> wow. Wow. 